Hi, Keenan. Um, here is your Unit 1 test, and I'll just give you some feedback on it. Um, the first one was correct. The remainder is 9. Um, one thing I just want to point out is that you don't always have to type your answers. Um, I think it's much, much easier for everybody if you just handwrite it and then take a picture with your cell phone. That's what everybody seems to do and find the easiest. And then that way you can include all the different steps and I can see your work and everything. So if you don't have the right final answer, I can always go back and find more marks for you in the work. Um, for question two, uh, just looking at this one according to what you've got here, maybe it's just messed up because of the, uh, the formatting. But if the highest exponent is uh, two, then the degree of the polynomial is 2. Um, and you should just write that as a number in this box. Um, don't write it as uh, x to the third or x squared. Just write it as a 2. Your y-intercept definitely is 6. Um, your domain is all x. And I want you to write the domain and the range and interval notation. So the domain is going to be written as um, I'll write it outside here, I guess. Um, all x, which is from negative infinity up to positive infinity, and that's how we write it in interval notation. And the range, same thing, because I think we'll hit just about every ba value of uh, x and y if we carry that graph on and up. And your end behavior is when you let x approach negative infinity and x approach positive infinity to see whether or not the graph is increasing or decreasing at, that, um, at those values, and so you need to show that as well. Um, for question three, let me see here. Um, for question three, let me see what you've got. Okay, um, again, with your degree, just write the number, just write nine, don't write the uh, x to the nine, um, or six in this case. Everything else looks good, except for, again, when we get down to domain and range. Um, there's no restrictions here. There's nothing that's going to make a denominator zero or any negative square roots or anything like that. And your range can be anything as well here. You're going to get all values of uh, x and y. And the same thing here for your, uh, for your domain for, for the second function, any x will work in this equation and will give us a, a real value. So with your end behaviors, you've got as uh, x approaches negative infinity, as x approaches positive infinity, but you haven't said what happens. And so you need to describe whether or not that graph is going to increase towards positive infinity or decrease towards negative infinity um, as those x values increase like that. Uh, for this question, uh, question four, uh, when you solve it, I would really prefer that you have all of the steps for the solution, and again, that's why handwriting is, is better. Um, I have a feeling I'm not seeing exactly what you handed in here, because there seems to be some stuff missing that I'm sure you included. I'm just going to open it up on my computer screen as well, and I can see if the formatting is the issue. Okay, yeah, that's exactly what's happening here. So this looks nothing like what you really handed in. Um, it's just a, a formatting problem as it comes over as a, as a download onto my iPad. So for question four, um, I think you've, uh, let me see what, what you've got here, x minus four. You've missed a root at x equals four for four a. And so for this one, you need to have the x equals four root included. And I've got it as equals because you haven't shown um, a chart or a number line where you test to see if the function is greater than or less than zero at these values. So really what you need to do is kind of create a chart and you've got all these different values. Um, so something less than minus one. So say we chose uh, x equals minus two here. Um, and then something greater than 2, so choose like x equals 3 and so on, and you're going to see what happens to the function, whether it's positive or negative, at these different values that correspond to the ones that you've got. 
once you figure out whether or not the values you want are greater than or less than the values that you got for your roots, then you should construct a number line or you should write your answer in interval notation so that we can see um, the, the solution set for this. Um, again, you're writing in the old-fashioned notation, the x is an element of r slash x is greater than or equal to 2. That's no longer accepted at university. It's all done in interval notation now. So if you're showing x greater than or equal to minus 2, uh, positive 2, sorry, then you would use a square bracket start at 2 and go all the way up to positive infinity and close it with a round bracket because all the infinities always have a round bracket. Um, the same thing for B. I need for you to show on a number line or using a chart which areas um, this function is negative, which means less than 0, and in which areas it's positive, which means greater than 0. And so you haven't quite got enough work here, and again, you've given your, your solution in the old-fashioned notation, and you should give it in the uh, interval notation, okay? Okay, for question 5 and 6, um, they're great. And then let's take a quick look at question 7. And question 7, really what I would like for you to, to state there um, is that x minus a is a factor rather than a root. Um, it's a factor for the original equation, and that means that a is a root. Okay, so just be careful with your um, with your terminology there, and your uh, your math terms. Finally, question eight. Um, you did that one perfectly using the elimination method to solve, and um, k equals five, f equals three is correct. And uh, question 9 is kind of a doozy, but it looks like you made a really good effort at coming up with something there. Um, um, for the function that you've got here, if we make uh, x less than 2, uh, we're going to end up with some negatives there, aren't we? Um, the function is cubic uh, f of x equals or greater than 0 when um, x is less than 2. Uh, yep, that'll work. Um, okay, and f of 0 <coughs> equals 4, and so we end up with 2 times 2 times negative 1 is 4. Yep, that looks good. Good job. So just go back and have a look at those ones that I mentioned uh, from earlier on. Really the key thing that I want you to take out of this is using the interval notation and learning that because that's exclusively used now at university math courses. Um, so just work on that a little bit and uh, um, just uh, have a look over the rest of the corrections and you're ready for unit two.